Namaskar. This is David Hawthorne at astralview.com. The following is an excerpt from the Autobiography of a Yogi, Chapter 16, Outwitting the Stars. Mukunda, why don't you get an astrological armlet? Should I, Master? I don't believe in astrology. It is not a question of belief. The scientific attitude one should take on any subject is whether it is true. The law of gravitation worked as efficiently before Newton as after him. The cosmos would be fairly chaotic if its laws could not operate without the sanction of human belief. All parts of creation are linked together and interchange their influences. The balance rhythm of the universe is rooted in reciprocity, my guru continued. Man, in his human aspect, has to combat two sets of forces. First, the tumults within his being, caused by the admixture of earth, water, fire, air, and ethereal elements. Second, the outer disintegrating powers of nature. So long as man struggles with his mortality, he is affected by the myriad mutations of heaven and earth. Astrology is the study of man's response to planetary stimuli. The stars have no conscious benevolence or animosity. They merely send forth positive and negative radi radiations. Of themselves, they do not help or harm humanity, but offer a lawful channel for the outward operation of cause-effect equilibriums that each man has set into motion in the past. A child is born on that day and at that hour when the celestial rays are in mathematical harmony with his individual karma. His horoscope is a challenging portrait, revealing his unalterable past and its probably future results. The message boldly blazoned across the heavens at the moment of birth is not meant to emphasize fate, the result of past good and evil, but to arouse man's will to escape from his universal thraldom. What he has done, he can undo. None other than himself was the instigator of the causes of whatever effects are now prevalent in his life. He can overcome any limitation because he created it by his own actions in the first place and because he possesses spiritual resources that are not subject to planetary pressure. Superstitious awe of astrology makes one an automaton, slavishly dependent on mechanical guidance. The wise man defeats his planets, which is to say, his past, by transferring his allegiance from the creation to the creator. The more he realizes his unity with spirit, the less he can be dominated by matter. The soul is ever free. It is deathless because birthless. It cannot be regimented by stars. Man is a soul and has a body. When he properly places his sense of identity, he leaves behind all compulsive patterns. So long as he remains confused in his ordinary state of spiritual amnesia, he will know the subtle fetters of environmental law. God 
is harmony. The devotee who attunes himself will never perform any action amiss. His activities will be correctly and naturally timed to accord with astrological law. After deep prayer and meditation, he is in touch with his divine consciousness. There is no greater power than that inward protection. Then, dear Master, why do you want me to wear an astrological bangle? It is only when the traveler has reached his goal that he is justified in discarding his maps. During the journey, he takes advantage of any convenient shortcut. The ancient rishis discovered many ways to curtail the period of man's exile and delusion. There are certain mechanical features in the law of karma that can be skillfully adjusted by the fingers of wisdom. All human ills arise from some transgression of universal law. The scriptures point out that man must satisfy the laws of nature while not discrediting the divine omnipotence. He should say, Lord, I trust in thee, and know thou canst help me, but I too will do my best to undo any wrong I have done. By a number of means, by prayer, by willpower, by yoga meditation, by consultation with saints, by use of astrological bangles, the adverse effects of past wrongs can be minimized or nullified. Just as a house may be fitted with a copper rod to absorb the shock of lightning, so the bodily temple can be protected in certain ways. Electrical and magnetic radiations are ceaselessly circulating in the universe. They affect man's body for good and ill. Ages ago, our rishis pondered the problem of combating the adverse effects of subtle cosmic influences. The sages discovered that pure metals emit an astral light which is powerfully counteractive to negative pulls of the planets. Certain plant combinations were also found to be helpful. Most effective of all are faultless jewels of not less than two carats. The practical, preventive uses of astrology have seldom been seriously studied outside of India. One little known fact is that the proper jewels, metals, and plant preparations are valueless unless the required weight is secured and unless the remedial agent is worn next to the skin. Sir, of course, I, sh I shall take your advice and get a bangle. I am intrigued at the thought of outwitting a planet.